do you know most of the things we pray for the answers are not coming from heaven the answers are already on earth the outcomes that are captured in our lives are not just dependent on the will of God they are not just dependent on the love of God they are dependent on this mystery and this principle this is the reason why you can find two believers this is the reason why you can find territories this is the reason why you can find families this is the reason why you can find businesses are we together even if all saved loved by the same God but the quality of their Christian experience can become east and west apart and sometimes you wonder it looks like injustice how could God so lavish his grace on an individual a family a business a church and a ministry and then seem to ignore another we are unraveling that puzzle now because the Bible is saying that is not just love dependent the same Lord is rich unto all, but there is a mystery that most believers are not aware of. They know they are believers, but they were not taught they were farmers. And that every day you and I are given the liberty, provided it is called today, you are given the liberty to sow seeds, and you are given an assurance that there is a harvest waiting for you. So the question is not whether you have a harvest. The question is whether it is the harvest you really desired. It is on account of this teaching you will see the value of things like the mercy of God. You see that now? Because based on this law, there are people, families, territories that may never rise on account of the seeds that they are sown. If you sow to the flesh, you will of the flesh reap corruption. You sow to the spirit, you will reap life everlasting. Are we together? This is profound. So the Bible tells us that a man can make investments. A man can sow. A man can plant. And that when you plant, you will reap. Do not be weary in well-doing verse 9 let's read together one two read please <laughs> so he starts by telling you that God is a God of integrity he will not be mocked follow the progression then the next thing Paul tells us he describes the kinds of seeds that we have and he calls the seed whatsoever. Are we together? Then he proceeds to describe the kinds of soils that you can sow to the flesh and to the spirit. Then Paul tells you the harvest that you can reap a harvest called corruption and you can reap a harvest called life eternal. He ends by teaching you how to plant. He teaches you how to sow. And this is how to sow. Let us not grow weary in doing good or in well-doing. Your doing is your sowing. Your doing is your planting. And he says we will reap in due season if we fail not. So our seeds represent our honor to spiritual things or despising spiritual things. They are all seeds that when you get up in the morning and you choose as an act of your will in partnership with the word of God, in partnership with the spirit of God to invest in your spiritual life, you are sowing to invest in your understanding you are sowing are we together if you choose to ignore God it is also a seed you are sowing and that both soils are powerful they can produce negligence of spiritual things is a seed despising the Word of God is a seed despising prophesying is a seed laziness is a seed carelessness is a seed Excuses are seeds. 
whatsoever. Hatred is a seed. Rage is a seed. Whatsoever. And so he's saying that when it gets to the time of harvest and you see what is coming to you, don't blame God. That there is a system that insists that God is not mocked. You don't need to tell us what you are sowing. The harvest is obvious. It will reveal the kind and the quality. Don't tell me you prayed for five hours. Don't tell me you studied for two hours. No. If it is a seed, God cannot be mocked. Don't tell me that you gave and you give every day. That may not be necessary. Except just to encourage people. But that everything that is hidden eventually as a harvest. Every seed grows because it is buried. But the harvest, even if buried, must be dug out at the point of harvest. Is someone learning now? This is very powerful. So he says, let us not be weary. That means this consciousness is what empowers you. That when you want to give up, you remember, I am a farmer. My tomorrow has to be greater than my today. If you do not have this revelation, weariness will be your lot. He's saying when you see people continue, when you see that they do not give up, it's not just that they are superhuman as it were. The tendency for weariness comes upon all men. But this is the revelation that keeps others going prayer for instance is not a gift you can be helped by the spirit to assist does not mean to replace your effort it means to make possible and to make easy that is the assignment of help so when you invest in prayer even when you are tired even when you are sleeping when you invest in the word like you left your home some of you flew in it's a seed you're coming here you're sitting under this grace it's a seed it's part of your commitment to a tomorrow that looks like what god has said listen if most people know this we will stop blaming God for the many outcomes in our lives. He gave you a seed and left a principle. The name of the seed is whatsoever. Did you ever know that a seed, whatsoever, <laughs> goodness, whatsoever a man sows, who does the sowing? A man. Whatsoever a man sows, he says, that will he reap. A man can mean a man of God. A man can mean a man desiring influence. A man can mean a man desiring resources. A man can mean a man desiring efficiency. Any kind of man, provided you are a man, you have the gift and the exclusive privilege of being a farmer. But the Bible says you can sow to the flesh and you can sow to the spirit. And if you sow to the flesh, you will of the flesh reap corruption. If you sow to the spirit, you will reap life everlasting. How do you sow? By doing. Your doing. Your doings. As you engage upon the earth every day in words, in deed, your actions, the Bible lets us know that a planting is happening. Pastor Dell is coming to Leicester. Your obedience was a seed. While you obeyed, you were sowing. Today, we see that he sent you because the harvest speaks. You see that now? What Apostle Church of Selman said is very true because God is not always in absolute control of what happens in a man's life. What a man sows, he will reap. That is to say, if you sow wickedness, he will reap. And according to the Bible, he will not just reap 
but you will live a hundredfold. So as a Christian, do well to sow good things so that you will reap good things in due season. Thank you for always visiting this channel. For more videos like this, do not forget to subscribe and also share this video with all your friends. See you in our next video. God bless you.